and welcome along to Sirius Social this week. We're talking travel. So if this is your sector and you can spare us about eight minutes, then we might just be able to give you some insight that will help improve your social content and enable holiday discovery, leading to more holiday yays than holly oh my days with your content. Here to talk to me and no doubt picking them up, picking themselves off up the floor with that awful pun, is our um, our queen of insight and research, Katie Howe. You're going to be lifting the lid on some research you've been doing around travel. You've got a report coming out soon, and you're going to be giving us the insight track on that. Also joining us, um, friend of the, the agency, familiar face, Paul Stevens, CEO of Sagittarius. Before we jump into um, all the latest challenges with travel, Paul, just tell us a bit about Sagittarius and what you guys do, because you've got a travel and tourism focus, haven't you? That's right, yeah. we More than half of the work that we do is in the travel sector. Um, we're generally working with large travel brands, helping them embrace digital in their whole customer experience. So that means we're working on not only just things like their website, but looking at the CRM, the way they use data to improve customer service, and that then obviously overlaps with the work in social as well. So that's generally what we do. Let's get right into it. Travel's a really interesting space. Loads has been changing in the last sort of, sort of two years. Bit. But let's look at right now. What are, the, what, what are the prime challenges that those travel brands are facing with their content? I think the, 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 the challenge all travel brands have, not just in content, is, is justifying their existence, if you like. The, the travel travel is so commoditized things like airline hotel transfer any part of a holiday is so easy to buy in its individual components that then well what, what do i need the travel company for what do i need the tour operator for and uh, so therefore they have to justify their existence they have to stand for something if you like really they need to have their community and you, you know they need to make a a person want to buy their holiday from that brand rather than by the individual components. Now, looking through the lens of social, Kate, I know you, you're incredibly opinionated on this, which our clients love. But right now, what, I mean, what, what do we mean, need to be mindful of? What are the, the big problems? I think as I am very blunt about this. I the research shows that there are fifty six million conversations around travel in social, of which five million conversations mention the word holiday alone. Um, in Twitter and 9 million on Facebook. So we're talking really large numbers, a noisy, noisy space. And I would say, I'm going to be blunt, the, large, the largest issue is that most social content coming out from the travel industry is bland. It's blue. It's blue seas, it's blue pools, it's blue skies, it's just blue. <laughs> and And more importantly, there's very little motion. So when we're talking about thumb stopping content on a mobile phone, you don't see it. And I, I think that the challenge is actually being noticed at all. And the, the final bit is if those that are noticed, the customer journey is very broken between social and what goes on beyond social mm. into the sort of work that, that, that Paul does. Do you, do you see the same side side with the content? So I mean, I think what Casey's alluding to here is the use of filters. As consumers, when we go away on holiday, we'll put the Instagram filter on because we want our life to look yeah. just a little bit better. Are too many brands doing that? Are you seeing that on website uh, content? Ironically, I think brands are, re are appalling at doing that. They actually <laughs> think that their their hotel is really interesting rather than giving you photography or make amazing photography that makes you want to go and stay in that hotel. They go with the very bland side of things. Yeah. They're actually the polar opposite often anyway, which, make, which I find crazy because, again, if you wanted me to buy a holiday from you make me want it make me desire it yeah. rather than just here it is this is how much it costs which is kind of how it, i suppose it's, a, it's because they're so product focused they just think oh this is a hotel or this is a, a flight and this is these are the products we bolted together and there's the price underneath they've kind of forgotten to try and make the the customer sort of desire that and uh, therefore they don't they don't think about selling the dream in quite the same way whereas social everyone's trying to sell the dream or the the version of uh, the version of the holiday they'd like their their friends to think they're having, um, and so they, they they get more creative. That's really interesting. You picked up on how commoditized travellers at the moment, and you're you're absolutely right. 
I guess from the consumer's perspective, we're looking for the best holiday at the cheapest price to then go and tell the best story to our, our friends and family afterwards. But that, that can't be easy for brands to, to operate in a space where it is so commoditized, but the customer is looking for, for, for value all the time. Well, I think that's what I'm saying. I think this is where travel brands have got to justify not being the cheapest because that's a race to the bottom and, you know, just try and compete with buying the independent parts. They'll, they, they won't make money. So they have to add something by being able to offer you something different, by wrapping it in some sort of security or some sort of uniqueness that you can't buy if you went off and tried to buy those things. And there's plenty of things own. brands could be doing, right? There's plenty of ways in which they could be innovating. Well, the, the ones that are succeeding are the ones that are doing that. They're standing for something. They're either, you know, being the best at being luxury or being a, something a little adventurous or a little off the beaten track or whatever it is. Whatever it is, the the the, the real challenge is the area where you're trying to sell what you, know, you call your sort of bucket and spade holiday, where actually it is a race to the bottom for 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 um, who can be the cheapest, and that's the area where. You know, the people who want the cheapest will always find the cheapest, whatever they, that yeah. they do. The travel brands that succeed are trying to find the people who want more than that. Do you think luxury brands within travel should be doing more with their, their, their content? Can we get people spending more money if we feel that it's justified? Is there a role for the, 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 the upper end of travel brands? Absolutely. I, I don't know that it's just for, for the upper end. I just think that... Uh, you need content that makes you want to go on the holiday. So the, the, the travel brands need to be doing that. One of our clients, Contiki and, and Trafalgar as well, they do that very well. They create a lot of video, a lot of motion, um, and, and there's a story to be told around around their holiday, and they, they show a lot more of the people that, or the kind of people who go on those holidays. So that then if you're looking at that, you can kind of identify with it. Say, yeah, that's me. I'd, I'd like to be there. Yeah. And, 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 and that's where I think social works really well because someone sharing themselves just about to jump into a nice waterfall in Bali or wherever they are, it's like, I want to be there, I want to be that person. And I think travel brands need to sort of uh, embrace that a bit. You mentioned thumb-stopping content earlier. It'd be good to understand exactly what you mean by that. But from the commoditized challenge, looking through the lens of social... What do we need to be doing? How do we respond to it? If I'm if I'm a travel brand right now, what what do I need to be paying attention to, and how can I make it work for us? Paul spoke about inspiration, and I think I think that's fundamentally where uh, there is a shift across all verticals, all markets, which is that consumers want experiences. And it, it feels like a really natural fit, doesn't it, with the travel industry. However, it's not just the experience of the holiday. It's as much of the experience of booking the holiday. It's When we look at social media, for instance, 30% of, of, of the analysis that I did show that 30% of that audience is talking about dreaming about being on holiday. Yet what we see are the holiday companies not playing into that conversation at all. They're not taking them on a journey that says this is part of how you can have as much fun booking this holiday, exploring what you can do, but isn't that anticipation the bit we look forward to? It's the bit that makes it bearable through the winter months while we're waiting for our summer break. And and that bit is the bit that social plays very hard into, and I suspect is the bit that, that, that as you continue that journey, we need to see more of. And in terms of finding that, it it's not a one size fits all. Your experience is not my experience, it's not your experience. The things that you look for, you have small children, I have grown up kids, we have different views on what makes a great experience, both in booking and going on holiday. And that's the second part, which is, it's not a one size fits all. And again and again, we see in social travel being, we're just going to show you a wonderful beach and, you know. Um, there's far more to it yes yeah, more to it and, and more importantly it's broken out into different parts so your, your desires change so it's about relevancy as well as inspiration so what's relevant to you and you we're all different and that bit is where social gives you the opportunity to do a great deal more with your brand so let's stick with personalization because i think this is quite a key point it does feel like it was only yesterday 2013 coca-cola gave us those bottles with everyone's name on it i think that was kind of a, a spotlight on personalization and since then we've perhaps had, been more aware of the need for personalization with what sagittarius do and particularly with your your, your focus on the, the, the website work i get I guess you might see more than most the importance and impact of, of personalization 
Yeah, I mean, personalization isn't a new idea, really, or, or at least segmenting audiences and, and trying to use it's, it's a kind of classic marketing technique of trying to make sure your, your message is as relevant and targeted as it is for the audience it's being uh, designed for. So, what's changed really over the last sort of 20 years, really, is the, the fact that we're now trying to do that on such a scale. Not only have we got potentially different segments or different customer types that we're trying to deal with, but we'll also be trying to look at the whole customer journey because we might have six customer types, but we may have, I don't know, about 14 different channels or routes they're coming in. So then we've got a sort of, we've got a matrix of different customer journeys that we're trying to look at and look at how, how we can optimize that. And when that becomes on, on a large scale and you add geography and all sorts of other facets into that, that becomes quite complicated so now we're looking increasingly at using machine learning and artificial intelligence to then spot those trends because you there's just too many sort of options for a sort of a human to really be able to spot and then you can start to look at where there are particular customer journeys that are either failing or performing very well and looking at, at trying to sort of amplify the ones that are doing well or perhaps sort of completely flip the ones that are, are not going so well and turn them into to really good customer journeys. And, and for us, that's now trying to make a customer journey as not as normal as possible. <laughs> There's a great quote of, of a book called, um, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the book now, uh, but the book is Beware the Soul Sucking Force of Normality, is, is that actually just being ordinary and normal, even, even having good UX is not good enough now. You need something that is really exciting. It's like, oh, that was interesting. That's amazing. That was easier. You want that sort of wow. Um, and, Do you think and, enough to travel brands? appreciate that so another question are their mobile propositions delivering what they should be for today really really uh, uh, which is amazing you'd have thought by now people have got the message that mobile is quite important but it's still still a little bit of a afterthought too often an afterthought and again yeah. it, it drives us nuts because the the, the the stats only support that a properly optimized mobile site will convert so much so much higher and we know that a mobile journey will be part of a larger journey but a desktop with a tablet or whatever um yet nevertheless i think one of the challenges is that all brands and particularly in travel is there's only so much budget and they spend so much of their budget on just keeping the lights on so to speak rather than being able to push and, and create something that's truly different or truly truly amazing i guess i know the answer to this given what you said previously but Social presents opportunity for personalization. Much more should be happening. Mm. And it's not just the obvious. So you can do things like tone of voice. So if you take those that like to go on cycling holidays, they are the happiest people in social media. Their language is all, I can't wait. I'm really happy. I'm really delighted. It's all those positive endorphins oh, flying around. Yeah. Um, they're, they're probably all really fit people. Yeah, I know. Right? They probably yeah. are. Yeah. Um, but I'll tell you something really interesting. For, you know how I said 22% on average uh, of folk look at for recommendations and do their sort of research and exploration? When it comes to cycling, it's nearly 40%. Oh, wow. Which actually means they might be, but they also want to make sure that saddle doesn't rub. <laughs> 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 they go if I'm going to book a cycling holiday I want to make sure that bike fits you know it's just and I think <laughs> I apologise for the graphic image particularly of you eating your breakfast yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's, I'll give you another example so those that go camping the biggest conversation around camping is not camping equipment it's not where they're going on camping it's the food it's the food that matters the most to them. 95% of conversations that talk about camping talk about food. I mean, you can't get more validation that if you if you are trying to sell great camping sites, talk about food. Interesting. Um, and it, it, for me, I find it really interesting that just by it's skewing the content interest, it's skewing the um, tone of voice, to fit the audience, it's not just straightforward. Oh, they talk about this. Let's just talk about that. It's, it's, it's about whole, looking at those segments and those interests and desires and those passion points of your audience, and then mirroring them back at them. And that that is the bit that makes the largest difference in personalizing in social. Let's just talk budget for a second. You you brought it up a couple of times, Paul, and it, it's clearly got got a role to play here people watching this i dare say most will be agreeing with all your points 
are they forgiven for thinking, yikes, I need to be hiking up my budget here, I need to be spending more, I need to be doing more. This is going to be a costly exercise for me to meet these opportunities. Is that fair? Is it accurate? Is that just the way it is? It, it is It is expensive to do it properly, but actually it's almost inexcusable. You can't not do it. I mean, travel brands, particularly last year or so, along with every other brands, had to invest huge amounts of money in just coping with things like GDPR and, and the fact that Brexit's come in and what that might do to them in terms of operational side of the business. So some of this kind of stuff we're talking about maybe has had to kind of be dialed down. But as I said, everything we're talking about is really about improving the conversion of their customer, the acquisition or retention of, of existing customers. So it's money that's very wisely invested, even if it is it is money that needs to know, be invested. That's, and that, the point is it's the wrong bloody question. Right, it's the wrong question. You don't know how much is it. It's what is it going to deliver? Mm -hmm. What's the value in it? And the value is that's where your bleeding customers are. That's what they're doing. So the more you know, looking at it as a cost base is the wrong answer. What value is it for the business, and what impact it's going to have is probably the the, the, the question you should be asking. Then it's irrelevant, isn't it? Because without it, you're not actually going to make any sales. So you have to move forward. Again, it's, it's, again, most people think about marketing as, well, how many more people can we talk to, etc. Well, again, it's the wrong question as well. Well, how can I talk to the ones I'm already talking to better? How can I how can I be more engaging for them rather than trying to put more people in? At the top of the funnel, how can I, I kind of... Um, squeeze the middle. Yeah, squeeze yeah. the middle of the funnel a bit, a bit better. And that's where personalisation and creating relevant mm. content is, is where it's, uh, has its has its role, really. It's fascinating how many of these conversations we have... And the key principles that come out of it are the ways of old within marketing, understanding your audience, understanding what really motivates them, their behaviours and interests, and then speaking to that. I mean, your your camping reference already got my my <laughs> mind going whirring. Is that because digital's taken away from us? We haven't got the phones, the TVs, families are together, food time's become more important. It's just got me thinking, God, there's so many questions around that example you could be looking at. So I guess the key takeaway here is know your audience, know their interest, and then be blooming innovative with your, your, your content. Inspire be interesting, people. be interesting, be bold. Don't just be the same as, as everybody else. Don't use a blue filter, I guess it's going to be yeah. your key <laughs> takeaway. We'd love to get your comments. Um, this is an interesting one. We all travel, so whether you're a consumer or a travel brand, I'm sure you've got an opinion on what you've heard. Um, so if you have got any questions for the team, you can uh, reach us using hashtag serious social. Uh, thanks for watching. And thanks for joining us, guys. Appreciate Thank that. You.